as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. You can play a vital part in the defense of our country. Radar is a wonderful invention, but it cannot completely eliminate the chance of foreign aircraft slipping through undetected. To prevent the possibility of such an unwelcome surprise, the Ground Observer Corps has been established. This volunteer organization is composed of civilians who are spending a few hours of their spare time each week sky-watching. They have been taught how to do this job by Air Force personnel who also supervise the observer's time on duty. Today, there are 49 filter centers located in 27 states to which observation posts report. All these centers and posts are manned by volunteers. When the Ground Observer Corps extends its coverage to the rest of the country, many more sky watchers will be needed. If you are a teenager or older, enroll now for service in the Ground Observer Corps in your locality. Write or phone your nearest Civil Defense Center today, or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Help protect your country. This message is brought to you as a public service. It was quitting time at the Woodruff Mine. Doug Chandler had just come into the owner's office. He didn't have much hope that old Philo Woodruff would grant his request, but still, it was worth a try. Well, Chandler, what is it you want to see me about? I'd like to ask you a favor, Mr. Woodruff. A favor? What is it? Well, as you know, sir, my little boy is crippled. Yes, yes, I know that. His leg was broken in the fall, wasn't it? That's right, sir. It never mended properly. He's had to hobble around on crutches ever since. Well... I received a letter yesterday from Dr. Hollis at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Dawson City. He wrote to a specialist in San Francisco and described the case to him. And the specialist wrote back that he believes Eddie's leg can be fixed. Well, I'm glad to hear it. But what's all this leading up to? Well, to send Eddie back to the States and pay for the operation, I'll need a thousand dollars. Yes. I was wondering if you could advance me that much. Advance you a thousand dollars? Are you crazy? I know it's a lot of money. A lot to... of money. As a man hand, you're earning 200 a month. A thousand dollars amounts to five months' wages. I can work it off by next spring, sir. I'll even pay you interest on the advance. The answer is no. All right, Mr. Woodruff. Sorry, I bothered you. <clears throat> One moment, uh, Chandler. Yes, sir? You say your son is living in Dawson? Yes, sir. I suppose you like to see him as often as possible? Naturally. Well, I'll give you a chance to do just that. I want to send a message to Inspector Conrad at Mother Police Headquarters. You can deliver it for me. And while you're in town, you'll be able to visit with your boy. Thanks very much. When do you want me to leave? First thing tomorrow morning. Stop in at the office. My clerk will have the message ready for you. All right, sir. Now, incidentally, on your way out, ask the clerk to step into my office. Tell him to break pencil and paper. Yes, sir. Bert Heflin, the mine company clerk, was seated at his desk just outside Philo Woodruff's office. Say, Bert. Yeah? Mr. Woodruff wants to see you in his office. He said to tell you to bring pencil and paper. Okay. Doug Chandler said you wanted to see me, Mr. Woodruff. Yes. Pull up a chair, Heflin. I want to dictate a letter. Yeah, man. The letter will go to Inspector Conrad at Mother Police Headquarters in Dawson City. 
<clears throat> My dear Inspector, in accordance with your office. That evening, after leaving the mine office, Bert Heflin went to an isolated cabin, which was located some distance from the mining settlement along Gold Creek. Oh, it's you, Heflin. Hello, Rafe. Is Duke here? Sure, come on in. We're just having a game of poker. Duke Gurney, a brawny, hard-bitten individual, was seated at a table with a third man called Louis. Howdy, Heflin. Hello, Duke. Hello, Louis. Come on, Siva. Well, find out when that gold shipment is leaving? Yeah, Friday morning. 50000 in gold, I What? Oh, that's that's cool. uh, how about that, boys? I told you this deal was worth waiting for. Oh, we right. also found out something else. Such as what? Old man Woodruff sending a letter to Mally headquarters in Dawson asking for a constable to guard the shipment. What's he? Why? With a Mally guard and a couple of drivers, it'll be three against three. You gents are apt to have a real fight on your hands when you go to hold up that shipment. Yeah, he's right, Duke. This job's not going to be such a cinch after all. We oui, shooting down a driver is one thing, but shooting a Monty is bad business. I don't like and it. And neither do I. Relax, relax. I've got an idea this may be a break in our favor. Huh? Hey, what well, do you mean? What are you talking about? Heflin, you say old man Woodruff is sending a letter to Monty headquarters? That's right. Who's taking the letter? A mine hand named Doug Chandler. Has he left yet? No, he's leaving first thing in the morning. All right. Now, listen, here's my plan. We'll trail this guy, Chandler, and gun him down when he gets... Early the following morning, Doug Chandler set out on the journey to Dawson City. He didn't know that he was being trailed by Duke Gurney and the other two gunmen. Several hours later, Doug halted his team and prepared to cook his midday meal near the rim of a steep-walled canyon. The three crooks approached cautiously through a screen of trees and watched him as he built a campfire. Which one of us is going to plug him, Duke? I'll handle it. <laughs> Good shot. Come on. A moment later, the crooks reached the campfire and examined their weapons. Is he dead? If he's not, he soon will be. Well, let's see if he's got that letter on him. Uh, here, here it is. Inspector Conrad, Northwest Mounted Police. What do we do with this guy? Even into the canyon. Come on, help me carry him. Right. All right, heave him over. Now what? Get some grub for ourselves and then push on for Dawson. When we get there tomorrow morning, me and Louie will hold up somewhere on the outskirts. And you'll go into town and deliver the letter to Inspector Conrad. Sergeant Preston was returning to Dawson from an extended patrol. Soon after nightfall, he approached the spot where Doug Chandler had been ambushed. King was running ahead of the team as loose lead. Suddenly, his nostrils caught a faint odor of smoke. Puzzled, the great dog slackened his pace and swerved off the trail toward the rim of the canyon. Well, King, hurry, oh, 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 oh. What's wrong, King? Something down there in the canyon? The sergeant walked over to the spot where King was standing and peered down into the canyon. Far below, at the base of the cliff, he saw the smoldering embers of what seemed to have been a small campfire. In the glow given off by the embers, he could just make out the figure of a man lying in the snow. Yes, boy, there's a man down there. Certainly doesn't look as though he's sleeping. Hello, down there! The man didn't stir. We'd better go get him, King. Come on, boy. Turning his team around, the sergeant headed back toward the mouth of the canyon. It was nearly an hour later when he arrived at the spot where the man was lying. Oh, King! Hurry, oh, 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 oh. King, I know this man. He's Doug Chandler. Shot in the back. Let's see if his pulse is still beating. Yes, there's a spark of life left in him, boy. Perhaps we can save him. After the sergeant addressed the wound, Doug finally began to revive. Easy, Doug. You're in bad shape. Sergeant Preston. You feel strong enough to tell me what happened? I don't know. Stop to eat. Someone shot me. They must have thrown me off the cliff. Apparently you landed in the snow, did you? build a fire yourself? Yeah. I came to for a bit, dragged myself out of the snow. I managed to break off a few pieces of brush and start a fire. And I passed out again. Where were you headed? Dawson City. Carrying anything valuable? Uh, just... A letter for Inspector Count. Oh? From whom? Mr. Woodruff. You still have it? I don't know, Sergeant. Look at my inside pocket. All right. It's gone. Oh. What do we do now, Sergeant? We'd better camp here for the rest of the night. Tomorrow we'll make it to Dawson and get you to a doctor. The following morning, Sergeant Preston resumed the journey to Dawson. Doug Chandler was in such pain from the jolting of the sled that Sergeant could travel only a short distance at a time and then had to stop for rest. As a result, it was 24 hours later when he finally arrived in Dawson City. Sergeant, wait a minute. Looking. Hold, hold. 
What's the matter, Doug? Where are you going first? Well, I'm taking you straight to the hospital. Oh. On the way there, would you mind stopping off at the boarding house where my little boy is staying? I'd like to see him as soon as possible, just in case anything goes wrong. Why, of course, Doug. We'll pick up Eddie and take him to the hospital with us. All right. I'm getting to the hospital. <laughs> After arriving at the hospital, Sergeant Preston waited for a few moments with little Eddie Chandler while the doctor examined Doug. By the way, Eddie, did Dr. Hollis ever hear from the specialist in San Francisco, the one he wrote to about your leg? Oh, yes, sir. He said the specialist thought my leg could be fixed. Oh, that's fine, Eddie. I'm glad to hear it. Maybe it won't be long before you can get rid of those crutches. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? It'll cost an awful lot of money to send me back to the States and, and pay for the operation. I don't think Dad can afford it. Well, perhaps he can find some way to raise the money. Oh, well, maybe so. Anyway, I don't care about that. Just so long as Dad doesn't die. Well, don't you worry, Eddie. He'll pull through. Oh, here comes the doctor now. He'll be able to tell us how your dad's making out. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. After being shot from ambush, Doug Chandler had been taken to the hospital in Dawson City by Sergeant Preston. The sergeant and Doug's little boy, Eddie, waited tensely for the doctor's report. How is he, doctor? I'm afraid his condition is dangerous. Normally, the wound wouldn't be fatal, but he's lost a lot of blood, and the shock and exposure have weakened him considerably. You're going to extract the bullet? Oh, not yet. He's too weak. I want him to rest up first and gather his strength. If things look favorable, I may operate tomorrow morning. May I see him now? Please. Why, surely, son. As a matter of fact, he asked me to send you in right away. Are you coming too, Sergeant? No, Eddie. You go in by yourself. He wants to talk to you. In the meantime, I have to go over to headquarters and report to Inspector Conrad. A short time later at headquarters, Sergeant Preston was giving the inspector an account of what had happened. I found a man in Steep Wall Canyon, sir. Been shot in the back. I was afraid he would die unless he had immediate attention, so I took him to the hospital. I see. He told me he was carrying a letter for you from the owner of the Woodruff Mine. Woodruff Mine? Wait a minute, Sergeant. What's the name of the man who was shot? Doug Chandler. You sure there's no mistake about his identity? Positive. I've known him for some time, sir. Why do you ask? Because a man who said his name was Doug Chandler came here to headquarters yesterday with a letter from Philo Woodruff. A letter was stolen from Chandler by the person who shot him. Sergeant, it's beginning to look as though we're up against a well-laid scheme. May I ask what the letter was about, sir? Woodruff asked me to send the constable to guard a $50,000 gold shipment that he's sending down to Skagway. 50000 in gold? Well, whatever the scheme is, that certainly provides a motive. Just what I'm thinking. Did you assign a man to guard the shipment, sir? Yes, Constable Ross. Has he left yet? He left yesterday afternoon. He and the man who posed as Doug Chandler. And probably passed their camp sometime after dark last night. How soon can you be ready to hit the trail again? I'm ready now, sir. All right, go after them, Sergeant, and travel fast. That shipment is due to leave Gold Creek tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, Constable Ross and his companion were already more than halfway to Gold Creek. As they drove their teams along the bleak, snow-covered trail, the constable didn't suspect that they were being trailed by two other men, Duke Gurney and the crook called Louie, who had been dogging their tracks ever since they left Dawson. Soon after nightfall, they finally topped a steep ridge and came in sight of the mining camp spread out along Gold Creek. The crook, posing as Doug Chandler, shouted to the constable. Hey, stop a minute, constable. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Well, what's up, Chandler? Take a look down there. Down where? Down there, towards him off the creek. Looks like there's a cabin on fire something. I don't see anything down there. Oh. 
I reckon that'll take care of you for the time being. Leaving the constable where he had fallen, the crook broke off a pine branch and went back down the slope a short way so that his action wouldn't be visible from the mining camp. Then he set fire to the pine branch, waved it over his head, and at the same time gave voice to a shrill wolf howl. A short time later, the other two crooks appeared, driving their teams up the slope. Well, howdy, Duke. Hi, Louis. Well, how about it? Where's the constable? Over there on the ground. <laughs> ah, he's out cold. <laughs> Good work, Rafe. All right, boys, tie him up and we'll take him back to our cabin. We. Oui. I'll change into his uniform and go report to old man Woodruff at the mine. Some time later that evening, Duke Gurney appeared at the mine wearing the uniform of Constable Ross. So you're the man Inspector Conrad sent to guard the gold shipment, eh? Yes, sir. I'm Constable Ross. Well, I'm glad to know you have a chair. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> By the way, where's Chandler? He came back with you, didn't he? Oh, no, sir. He's still in Dawson, in the hospital. In the hospital? What's the matter with him? Typhoid fever. Typhoid, eh? It's a good thing I didn't give him that advance on his wages. Beg your pardon? Yeah, no matter, no matter. <clears throat> now about that ghoul shipment, I suppose you know I'm sending it out tomorrow morning. Yes, sir, the inspector told me. Very well. You can put up at the bunkhouse overnight. Be ready to start at six in the morning. There'll be two drivers carrying the gold. And remember... The safety of that shipment is in your hands. Uh, don't you worry, Mr. Woodruff. I'll see to it that gold gets to its proper destination. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night and two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And oh! Be right there in the ballpark and see a Grand Slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Pack 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat or Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was urging his team forward along the trail from Dawson to Gold Creek. All through the night he traveled, halting only for an hour or so at a time to rest his exhausted huskies. It was shortly after 7 o'clock the following morning that he finally pulled into Gold Creek and halted his team in front of the office of the Woodruff Mine. Philo Woodruff looked up in surprise as the sergeant strode into his office. Has your gold shipment been sent out, Chet? Yes, the driver's left about an hour ago. What about the constable who was supposed to guard the shipment? He went with him, of course. Was there a man with him when he arrived here from Dawson? No, uh, Doug Chandler was supposed to come back here with him, but the constable said he came down with typhoid fever. Had to go to the hospital. Doug Chandler's in the hospital, all right, but not with typhoid. What's that? He was shot in the back and left for dead before he reached Dawson. Great Scott. Who did it? That's what the Northwest Mounted Police would like to know. Whoever did it stole the letter you wrote to Inspector Conrad. But in that case, how did the constable happen to come here? A man posing as Chandler showed up in Dawson and delivered the letter to Inspector Conrad. The inspector sent Constable Ross back to Gold Creek with him. I, I don't get this at all. It doesn't make sense. What did the constable look like? Uh, he was a big fellow, dark-haired. Dark-haired? Constable Ross is blind. Uh, jumping Jupiter. Where is he? The man must have been a crook. No doubt about that, and we can both guess what he's after. Ash, my gold shipment. Holy mackerel, $50,000 worth of dust. Hey, Thunder Sergeant, you've got to go after them and now save Now, wait it. a minute. First of all, who knew you were sending that letter to the inspector? Hey, no one except Chandler and myself. And, of course, my clerk, Bert Heflin. The fellow sitting out there at the desk? That's right. If it's got you, don't suppose he... The either. only possible answer. Come in here a minute, Heflin. All right. What's the matter? Is something wrong? 
The game's up, Heffern. Doug Chandler's been found, and we know the constable who left here with the gold shipment was an imposter. Now, you'd better talk and talk fast. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You're the only person who could have passed along the information that Chandler was carrying that letter to Inspector Conrad. I knew about that letter, sure. But so what? I I don't even know what you're accusing me of. If either of those drivers carrying the gold shipment are killed, you'll hang for murder. This is your one chance to save yourself. Cindy, you'd better talk. I tell you, I don't know what this is all about. How can I talk when I've got nothing to say? All right, Heffern, if that's your attitude... I'm arresting you as an accessory to the shooting of Doug Chandler. You can't arrest me. I haven't done anything. You've got to... Turn around and hold your hands out in back of you while I snap on these handcuffs. There. What are you going to do with him? Can you have one of your mine hands guard him till I get back? Of course, but what about you? I'm going after the drivers and the fake constable. You've got to stop him, Sergeant. If that shipment is stolen, I'm a ruined man. I send her I'll pay you a $2,000 reward if you can save my gold. $2,000, eh? I'll remember that, Philo. All right, King, let's go, boy. It was several hours later when the fake constable and the two freight drivers reached a point where the trail wound through a narrow defile in the hills. They had just emerged into the valley beyond when Duke Gurney, who was posing as the constable, shouted a command to halt. Now, your teams. Oh, 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 oh. About time to eat, huh, constable? Sorry, gents, but that's not why we're stuck, huh? Get your hands up, both of you. Good. That's the idea. Get up and start reaching. And don't try any funny stuff. This gun in my hand isn't the only gun that's covering you. If you'll cast your eyes at that big boulder over yonder, you'll notice two more guns aiming this way. Holy smoke, he's right, Jid. Yeah. There's two guys over there behind that rock. We got him covered, Duke. Go ahead and take the gun. Yeah, I'll attend to that little detail right now. All right, give me your... Yeah. <laughs> All right, the harmless. Come on over and join the party. Right, right under Duke, I got to hand it to you. He went off without a hitch. We, oh, it's plenty oh. smart the way you figured this job out. I sure never thought I'd see a Mountie turn crook. <laughs> I'll let you in on a little secret, Jen. I'm no Mountie. What? I just borrowed the Mountie's uniform. How about it, Rafe? Did you bring the constable along like I told you to? Sure thing, Duke. I got him on my sled. I'll cut up and gag. All right. We'll tie up these two drivers and dump all three of them somewhere off the trail. And we'll take the gold and clear out of here. Got some rope handy? Yeah, on my sled. Okay. Hold your gun, Louie. Let's get busy. Wait. Well, I thunder the Mounties. I'll get you for this. Shut up and keep those hands oh, up there. Hey, hey who's that? A Mountie. With his team silent, Sergeant Preston had just emerged Down. from the pass. He jumped from his sled runners and covered the crooks. You won't take me, Mountie. Oh. The Mounties gun spoke first and Duke toppled right. face downward into the snow. Rafe and Louie went for their guns, but the drivers lunged for them. Louie fought his way free with a vicious blow and turned to fire at Preston. Can I get you, Marty? Oh, you don't... No. Again, the sergeant shot first, and Louie fell wounded. After taking his gun, the driver turned to help his own partner. Between them, they overpowered Rafe by the time Sergeant Preston reached the scene. Keep him covered while I take a look at these two on the ground. Uh, sure will, Sergeant. You recognize either of them? Yes. This one wearing the constable's uniform is Duke Gurney. He's wanted for armed robbery. Are they dead? No, just wounded. I'll bandage them up, and then we'll take all three of them back to the mine. How'd they pull off their scheme? I mean, one of them posing as a constable and all that. Well, it's a long story, Jed. I suspect Bert Heffern was mixed up in the scheme, but he claims he's innocent. Says he knows nothing about it. However, even if we can't convict Heffern, these three will certainly go to prison. And if Doug Chandler should die, they'll hang for murder. Hey, now, wait a minute. Heffern's not going to wiggle out of this rap. He was the one who got us into this deal in the first place. By thunder, if we hang, he'll hang with us. Because I'll testify against him. Thanks very much. That's all I wanted to know. Two days later, Sergeant Preston and Eddie stood at Doug Chandler's bedside. Doug was propped up in bed with a cheerful grin on his face. Well, Doug, the doctor tells us that you're out of danger. That's right, Sergeant. He says I ought to be on my feet in a couple of weeks. Oh, gosh, Dad. I sure am thankful you're going to be all right. I don't know what I would have done if you had died. Well, son, there's the man we have to thank for it. If he hadn't found me down there in the canyon, well, you probably never would have seen me again. I'm mighty grateful to you, Sergeant. Well, you <clears throat> By the way, Doug, here's something for you. What? A roll of bills. Hey, what the dickens? Two thousand dollars from Philo Woodruff. What? Holy smoke, how come? Well, he offered me a $2,000 reward if I could save his gold shipment. But the Northwest Mounted Police doesn't accept rewards, as you know, Doug. So I persuaded him to turn the money over to you. After all, you were shot in the line of duty, so to speak, and it was through you that the police got wind of the whole scheme. Sergeant, I... 
I just don't know what to say. Eddie, do you realize what this money will mean to us, son? Is there enough to pay for the operation on my leg? Oh, you bet there is, son, more than enough. And when you go back to the States, I can go with you. Just think, it won't be long before you can get rid of those crutches and be playing around just like all the other kids. Oh, golly, Dad. Well, King, old boy, with Eddie and Doug taken care of, I'd say this case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. Sergeant wasn't expecting trouble when he came to Timberton, but now he'll be facing trouble and danger aplenty as he sets out to trail a desperate hold-up man with a fortune in gold at stake. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.